observation steps. Neurological observations. Follow and learn the steps to be able to perform neuro observations within expected NMC standards. On meeting Sumira, complete the ship safe approach, then proceed to the Alps checks. Steps to conduct the observation. Inform the patient of the procedure and explain and discuss the assessment and gain consent to assess the GCS. Observe the patient without speech or touch. If the eyes are closed, call out their name. Talk to the patient. Note whether they are alert and giving their attention or restless or lethargic and drowsy. Ask the patient who they are, where they are, and what day, month, and year it is to establish whether the patient's level of consciousness is deteriorating. If the patient is becoming disoriented, changes will occur in this order. Disorientation as to time. Disorientation as to place. Disorientation as to person. To evaluate motor response, ask the patient to squeeze and release your fingers. Both sides should be assessed and then to stick out their tongue. To evaluate motor responses and to ensure that the responses are equal and not reflexive. If the patient does not respond, apply painful stimuli. Responses grow less purposeful as the patient's level of consciousness deteriorates. As the condition worsens, the patient may no longer localize pain and respond to it in a purposeful way. Record the findings precisely, recording the patient's best response. Accurate recording will enable continuity of assessment. Compliance with NMC guidelines on documentation. To test grip and ascertain strength, extend both hands and ask the patient to squeeze your fingers as hard as possible. Compare grip and strength. To test grip and ascertain strength, record both arms on the GCS chart to reflect the best outcome. Accurate monitoring of pupil reaction. Reduce any external bright light by darkening the room if necessary, or shield the patient's eyes with your hands. To allow accurate monitoring of pupil reaction and enable a better view of the eye. Assess size, shape, and equality of pupils. Ask the patient to open their eyes and note the size, shape, and equality of both pupils simultaneously. To assess the size, shape, and equality of the pupils as an indication of brain. To assess the direct light reflux of the pupils, hold each eyelid open in thumb or ask them to look straight ahead at one point. Shine a bright light into each eye as above, moving from the outer corner of each eye towards the pupil. This should cause the pupil to constrict immediately and cause an immediate and brisk dilation of the pupil once the light is withdrawn. Hold both eyelids open if required, but shine the light into one eye only. Both pupils should constrict immediately and briskly dilate once the light is withdrawn. To assess consensual light reflex, record pupillary size in mm and reactions on the observation chart. Brisk reaction is documented as positive, no reaction as negative. Record unusual eye movements such as nystagmus or deviation to the side to assess cranial nerve damage. Note the observations, the rate, 
character and patterns of the patient's respirations. Respirations are controlled by different areas of the brain. Take and record the patient's temperature at specified intervals. Damage to the hypothalamus, the temperature regulating center in the brain, will be reflected in grossly abnormal temperatures. Take and record the patient's blood pressure and pulse at specified intervals. To monitor signs of increased intracranial pressure, hypertension and bradycardia usually occur late after the patient's levels of consciousness have begun to deteriorate. Call for medical assistance as soon as it is evident that there is a deterioration in the patient's levels of consciousness. Ask the patient to close their eyes and hold the arms straight out in front with palms upwards for 20 to 30 seconds. Observe for any signs of weakness or drift. To show weakness and difference in limbs straight out in front. Observe for any sign of weakness or drift. If one arm drifts downwards or turns inwards, it may indicate hemiparesis. To test arm strength, to test flexion and extension strength in the patient's extremities by having the patient pull and push against your resistance. Stand in front of the patient and extend your hands. Ask the patient to push and pull against your hands. Ask the patient to lie on their backs in bed. Place the patient's legs with knee flexed and foot resting on the bed. Instruct the patient to keep the foot down as you attempt to extend the leg. Then instruct the patient to straighten the leg while you offer resistance. Document the observation readings on the patient's GCS chart. Do not be influenced by previous observation. To ensure adequate records and enable continued care of the record only what you see. Report any abnormal findings to medical staff to prevent further deterioration and allow timely intervention.